Hey there, welcome to the channel or welcome back. I'm Angela and this is another garden vlog. It's what I've been up to this past week here in my zone six garden, southwestern Ohio in the US. And I've made some pretty serious progress on some different things. I'm happy to share that with you guys. If that sounds interesting, stick around. I think the most exciting thing that I've done here in my garden, along with the help of my husband, actually he was the main person who did most of the work. I was helping him, what little help I did, is we made some pretty serious progress on the fence that we've been working on since last year to enclose the veggie garden. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what we got done. I'm take you to the back of the garden here. And it might help if I put an overhead picture of the whole garden and kind of trace out where the fence is going to go. might be a little more uh, descriptive and meaningful than this, but I'll do that here in a moment. So we got all the posts set in, lining this one side. This is the back side of the garden. It'll go pretty much up to the house down there. And what that does is it kind of cuts off these woods. We will have a gate right here to access around to the back of the house so it pretty much shields the garden from all these woods right there where the deer do frequent and then kind of flipping around i'll take you to the front side of the garden so we're going to kind of do the same thing along the front of the garden all along here and then wrapping around behind the greenhouse there and we did get five, yeah, five posts set in here. I'm so excited about this. I can finally see this happening. Um, there's the three here. And then two back there. So it will connect on to the back corner of our shed right there and I had to make sure to leave enough space in between where the fence fencing will be and the greenhouse I need to seriously get that cleaned up that's on my project list so it encloses the whole like the entirety of the vegetable garden which will be good And on the front side, we'll have um, actually two gates. And one will be right here at the main entrance. This is where you guys uh, see me come in to the garden on a lot of videos. And then the other gate will be down that way. So that if we want to pull the cart out of the shed, we can take it directly down this open path and out that way out into the rest of the property uh, just to make it so we're not having to maneuver any equipment out of the shed you know along in between all the beds and everything to get out to what will be this gate here hope that made sense I will go ahead and put an overhead up and kind of trace out the path in case you're interested in that level of detail and I do want to show you something new that I'm trying this year to help prevent slug damage other than the little cups full of beer that seem to be effective but I can't be buying beer every two days for the slugs <laughs> so I have some sunflowers in this grow bag right here and they had started to uh, sprout you guys can see right there and this was fine yesterday had two leaves on it the first two leaves and now something's munched one of them a couple years ago I had bought a roll of this copper tape kind of feels like foil I mean, it's copper it's really thin and it's not super sticky but sticky enough onto the fabric of these grow bags i had read somewhere that this could potentially keep slugs at bay because they don't like maneuvering over this so i'm going to try that i just put it on the one bag there and we'll see 
having trouble getting my camera to focus. Sorry about that. So I just put it on the one bag right there to start with and um, kind of see how that goes. And if, it, if it's effective, you know, I'll put it on as many of these bags as I can. I'll show you the roll of it. So this is what it looks like. I'll link to this. I'm sure I got it on Amazon, but I'll put a, I'll find that and put a link to it below in case you're interested. Um, for I can't even remember how much that costs because it's been a little while. And what I'm planning to work on today, or maybe this evening, because we're having a hot one here today, is to get some beans into these three grow bags here and cucumbers. I've never grown those two things together, so we'll see how it goes. I'm kind of running out of space um, as usual, and these three bags have the nice cages on them so that the beans will grow up on and the cucumbers will attach to. So I'm just gonna like stuff these full of seeds and we'll see how that goes. I do have another grow bag that has a cage on it and it's not being occupied now but it needs more soil so I can't do anything with that yet. And I'm going to be working on that today. If I didn't say it already, this is Wednesday, June 12th. We're halfway through the week already. I will be back out here again before you guys see this. So there will be one or two more days on this weekly garden diary vlog. So I'll catch up with you in the next segment. Bye. Hey there. I'm back and it is Sunday, June 16th. A couple of updates for you and then we'll wrap this week as garden vlog up. The first thing I want to show you is my yucca plant. It's so pretty. It only blooms about every three-ish years, give or take. And in the 12 years we've been here, this might be, so it's blooming right now, and this might be only the third or fourth time I've seen it in bloom. So I'm going to share that with you. Let's go. So this plant was here when we moved in. It's planted right at the base of this black walnut tree. And you can see the foliage there. And so the blooms are looking pretty sorrowful. I think it's because we're in such a heat wave and there's been very little rain, but it is so beautiful. And I feel like that at nighttime, like at twilight when that's coming on, it's the best time to look at this, these flowers just because they seem to kind of glow just as dusk is setting in. But I feel bad for it because it's had a pretty hot time. I'm not sure all the details of these plants. They may be made for hot weather. I just know that this year it seems to not be as abundant or full as it usually is. And it looks a little bit wilty. It's still so pretty. So I had to share that with you. And then I have an update on my slug situation. I found that that copper tape may not be the best solution, although I only tested it out on the one pot which only had one little seedling in it. So it wasn't like a great scientific experiment, but the morning after I put that copper tape on, that seedling was totally gone. So, and I don't know can't prove that it was the slugs. It just seemed to have been experiencing slug damage. And it's not really a good enough experiment to prove whether the tape is doing a good job or not. So I'm going to leave the tape on this grow bag. And I'm going to have to reseed it. I had sunflowers in there. And a lot of my other seedlings are not germinating. The new seeds that I've put in and I don't know if that is because it has been so dry even though I'm trying to keep it watered you know it can be kind of difficult when you water something pretty deeply and then it seems like 30 minutes later it's dried out again <clears throat> the other thing I did was to I found a new new to me greenhouse in my city or it's on the other side of uh this area it took you know 30 minutes drive away so not too far but they have all kinds of peppers like heirlooms all varieties 
and I went ahead and bought a few and tomatoes as well as peppers. So I bought a few tomato seedlings that are already doing pretty well. They're pretty tall. And I also bought some pepper seedlings. Thought, well, why not? Since my own efforts this year just uh, ran into some issues. But one of the pepper plants, this is a chameo, chameo. This already has peppers on it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I got some varieties that either I never had grown before or that I just didn't have seeds for this year. So I'm kind of excited about that. So I will get some peppers at least and we'll see how they all do. And it's just been kind of um, like most years as a gardener. We had constant rain all spring, like an inordinate amount of rain. And now even for early mid June, our temperatures feel like August temperatures and it's dry as a bone. So some years are like that. I know climate change is probably making it even worse, but um, we just have to work with things the best as we can. And given that I'm trying to water at, in the evening or if I can get up early enough before the sun starts blazing, then I'll water in the morning. And that also includes watering all the new trees that I've planted just because, you know, they need water too, especially especially like I, I like to plant trees in the fall because it gives them time to get established before the blazing hot summer comes um, but just so happened that the nursery where I've gotten my trees this year shipped them in the spring instead of waiting till fall so I'm sure they have um, like a rhyme and reason for when they do their shipping but I felt kind of um, uneasy about planting so many trees well, in early June, late May, early June, it just seemed so close to the hot summer to be getting them in the ground. So I'm trying to give them extra TLC and give them the best chance that they have for making it through this first summer. And that's about it for this, uh, this week. One other thing I'll show you and then we'll sign off one second. I did make a little bit more progress on my two long beds here. These two beds are three foot by 12 foot and they used to be situated in a different orientation like these ones on the side here. But having them that way, they extended way far out close to the house and they never really got enough sun like the last third of the, each bed just stayed shaded most of the time. So I've gotten them situated um, 90 degrees to what they were. They're not set in. have to get the placement just right and set them in. But uh, I think that's going to give, give me a lot more utility with these beds as far as maximizing sun exposure. The way our sun here works, it comes up over on that side and then it crosses up along the house, like over top of the house, and comes down in that direction. So they will get plenty enough sun, like the whole bed should get enough sun in this orientation here. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the hardest part was just digging, digging them out of the ground because we have them, I had them set in, you know, six inches into the ground there, these four by four posts. So they were pretty not permanent but they were pretty solidly in place so just getting them up out of the ground and rotated was like the hardest part of this job now it's just fine-tuning the location so that they line up nicely you know with the beds over here it looks nice just for aesthetic reasons and you know getting them set back in that shouldn't be too difficult I'll probably wait until we finally do get some rain so the ground will be easier to dig and that's about it for this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today in my garden. I hope your garden's looking great this summer or winter if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. What are the temperatures like? Can you grow in winter in the Southern Hemisphere? If you are a Southern Hemisphere friend of the channel, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. 
and until next time bye